There used to be a slogan at MGM, and it was, there are more stars at the studio than there are in the sky. Well, of course, that wasn't true. But I've got to say, you've never seen so many stars in one place, even the Cannes Film Festival, as those who were here for the awards gala of the Palm Springs International Film Festival. And we're going to take a look at some of those stars in their arrivals and then talk about the heart of the festival, which is the filmmakers, after this. Thanks to the Camelot Theatres for supporting the arts, bringing award-winning and nominated films, art films, and documentaries to the Coachella Valley. Thanks also to Dr. Betty Baxter, Certified Life Coach and Consultant, Cash Baxter, Rick and Rosine Supple, Supporting the Arts in the Palm Springs Cultural Center, Betty M. Barker Trust, Serp and John Conti Foundation, Stephen Filibosian Foundation Supporting the Arts and the Virginia Waring International Piano Competition, Dorothy and Harold Meyerman, supporting the arts in the Palm Springs Art Museum. Coachella Valley History Museum, sharing the unique history of the desert and its pioneers. Dr. Carrion Foundation, providing scholarships for Coachella Valley Mexican-American students. so many amazing people in one place it's pretty exciting like you're looking at Meryl Streep right now got Tom Hanks right there it's um you don't get jaded to that it's it's really kind of thrilling even for someone who thinks they're jaded you don't you, you get around these people and you, you just get you just get happy uh, you want to see this is why you come here's why you come to say hello for someone to, to the lights oh you know what? There's sometimes you get to make a couple of movies in a row. You, I'm here for Tom you Hanks get to tonight. Kiss her. I've written other times such again. a good speech. It's oh my 17 god! 17 pages long though. They told me to speed it you've up. Got, no, you've got all the time okay, in the good. world here. Okay, this good. isn't on TV. You look We're sensational. We're both friends. By Woo! the way, Miss August Osage County, Thank where's you. your sash? I know. But can I just ask? I'm going to ask you a question right here on camera. How many days was that dinner scene? How many days did it uh, take? Four. You? That's it. Maybe three and a half. I would have thought two and a half five. weeks. I'm Julia, by the way. I'm sorry, I just crashed your whole Oh, thank God, they're official. Were you here? Are the kids at the hotel or anything like that? No. You just blew out here and we I did. did. Okay. We did. Where where's, were you 44 Where's Mrs. Ago? Hanks? She, we were on a plane. Don't tell me she's not here. No, she's not here. We were on a plane back from Holiday in which we had a dog loose on a leash and my granddaughter upchucked on the floor right next to me. Okay, this is the stuff that holiday three. dreams are made of. Oh, but it's all glamorous, it's all glamorous. And so then I put on a tie and came here to be with you. I am now with Daryl McDonald, who is the executive director of the Palm Springs International Film Festival. We just celebrated the 25th anniversary. How would you say this? I mean, it, it, it was so phenomenal. The gala was phenomenal. The True. films are phenomenal. So what, what do you want to say about the differences since you started? Because you started with a festival very early. Right back in the beginning, actually, 1990. And, and 
Gloria, what can I say? I mean, it's 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 a quantum leap forward. Actually, it's taken a quantum leap, leap forward year by year and decade by decade. But nothing we've done before has approached um, the scope of this year's festival. The star power on that stage last night, events like this, varieties tend to watch, uh, and the Hollywood star power even here today. Um, it's, it's just, it's a terrific 25th anniversary present to the city of Palm Springs. And uh, what can I say? I hope we have another 25 years just as great. Well, I think it's just going to grow and grow. I read something that was in the paper today, and I really wasn't aware. Apparently, you said it opening night, or, or Harold said it, and I was nursing bronchitis, so I wasn't there. But, and that is how many now the studios are calling to put people on the red carpet. It's incredible. They're bringing their own people in who have nothing to do with the gala, but who are rising stars or actually associated with hit movies this year just to get the attention they can get for that extra Oscar push uh, and their upcoming movies uh, going into the season. Um, and you're right, that never has happened before. And it's, it's a, again, another turning point for the film festival and, and speaks loudly to the amount of worldwide coverage this event gets. Uh, having you two, having Bono here was just amazing. Absolutely. I just finished, in fact, introducing He and the Edge uh, at the Annenberg where they're doing a talking pictures program for us with Mandela, The Long Walk to Freedom. Um, again, we've never, certainly never had a musical guest of that stature at the festival, although we've had some great, great composers. He's a composer in his own right, of course, but he too is up for a Golden Globe this year and very likely an Oscar for his uh, theme song for Mandela, Ordinary Love. Um, you know, this the, the, the film Mandela, uh, it's really a, an extraordinary love story, uh, a very complicated love story. So we wanted to write kind of a complicated love song to go with it. We're pretty good at the complicated love songs. And so that's what it is. And ordinary love is about the sort of, also applies to the decency that people lose in struggles and civil wars and, and that kind of thing. But, uh, but also the decently, decency lovers lose uh, when they become estranged. It gets the word of Palm Springs out to a whole new audience uh, and indeed it, it broadens um, what this festival stands for and what it does because the reason he was involved in the movie to begin with are, are the issues involved and what this festival is about first and foremost is the films and the issues they address. So having somebody of that stature here uh, because uh, of what he considers to be an important platform, the festival, um, to speak about the issues that matter to him is is, is really a special thing. You know, I noticed at the gala last night that while you had these tremendous stars, still the, the issue of activism came up over and over and over again. All of these are people who are interested in our world and being part of, well, we're all part of the world, but making it better. No question, um, but I think that's one of the things about this festival that attracts that kind of talent, that mega talent, uh, those big stars uh, here to the festival, because believe me, they got tons and tons of invitations to appear at festivals and events year-round. Uh, but the credibility this festival has built for itself in terms of uh, its film lineup, the issues uh, addressed, the fact that we were presenting films from 60 or 70 different countries around the world, films from different cultures, different societies, all walks of life um, brings credibility to the event itself and is one reason that these uh, stars and big Hollywood names uh, feel good about aligning themselves with the festival. So I'm very grateful to the Palm Springs uh, Film Festival for this icon award even though it isn't very helpful when I <clears throat> it isn't helpful to be thought of this way because you really you need each other. We're all the same size. Some of us are thinner. <laughs> Some of us are heavier. But we all count. And um, for an actor, it's being heard and felt that counts. Well, I want to thank you, Daryl. I mean, you have done a spectacular job, and certainly you deserve a lot of the credit. Thank you very much. A great deal of it, so thank it's, you. It's, it's, it can be shared amongst hundreds, believe me. This is a, a labor of love and a collaboration for so many talented and absolutely dedicated people, not least of which is, of course, our chairman of the board, Harold Matzner. Variety, a publication that once was called the Showbiz Bible, but now has gone digital, but remains important, comes out every year with the 10 directors to watch. And they include some of today's
biggest directors who were chosen several years ago. Doing that film, which is based on a true story, as you know, of course, um, and working with Disney, was there a lot of pressure? Did you feel that there'd be pressure from this Disney studio? I, I was a little worried. The script was completely developed outside of Disney, so it came in fully formed, and they were able to make a judgment about whether they wanted to do the movie based on a completed script, so that was helpful. Um, but I, w I was worried. I love those guys at Disney. I worked with them before, and so they said, no, we really like the script. We want to make this movie, and so I trusted them, and along the way, they were, they were great partners in this. So. Well, you've done, of course, so many other good movies, like Blindside, which was wonderful. And how important is this movie to you? You know what? Every, every movie you do uh, is like a child, and so you love them all equally, and some of them shine a little more brightly when they leave the door than others, but uh, the, the experience, the process, and this is a movie that's very much about the creative process, so it has a special place in my heart. Had you ever worked with Tom Hanks before? I had not worked with Tom. I knew Tom just a, a little bit, so when I was able to sit down with Tom and talk about playing Walt Disney, that was uh, kind, of, kind of a treat. I don't know what we would have done if he'd have said no. All right, Colin right, Farrell. Let's do it. What a thrill. What a thrill for me to oh, be here standing God, before you. Nice. Now listen, yellow. You, look beautiful. You, you do all these interviews. You can't tell them all they're fabulous. I don't like to miss an interview that I have the opportunity to do. Did, That's did you? not necessarily fully true. I don't believe, I really don't. I mean, last night was crazy. Last night was big, wasn't it? it was, it's, I, I've never, I hadn't been to this festival before. It's a lot, it's a lot more bigger and a, a lot more extravagant than I thought it would be. This was really special, Save Mr. Banks, the one I did with John Lee Hancock. It was really, really Yeah, really and you were wonderful in it. Two weeks, but it was a really, really special two weeks. I mean, it's, it's amazing to think that the person who wrote Mary Poppins actually had such an unpleasant background. Yeah, and I mean, a lot of the a lot of the lines, the the dots were joined by by Kelly Marcel's imagination plus what she could find out about about P. L. Travers' upbringing. Um, we, and there was scant information on her upbringing really. And and the 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 version of her father that I played was was kind of um, one of a in a way a dramatic contrivance as well. I mean, we don't know what he was like at home. We do know that he liked to drink a little bit too much and he died earlier than he should have. And um, and he did lose work and went from town to town a little bit. But um, but yeah, it was a, it's a, it, that's the nicest thing you can say about a film is that it makes you feel. I think not just think but feel. I have to say that our viewers know you, of course, for Bridesmaid, both you Ben and Melissa, <laughs> and uh, it made quite an impact. It was a doozy. It was a yeah. really. It was such a fun. That was one of the most fun things we've ever done. It was. Right. Now, do you have a new film out now? We do. He. Uh, that's why we're here today. Ben is delightfully being uh, recognized as one of the the ten new directors to watch. And we wrote uh, Tammy together, and he directed it. And, and we. She's Tammy. So I'm it's a Tammy real. It's a family affair. Yeah. It's uh, It's it's kind of wonderful. It was me. Susan Sarandon plays my grandmother and Kathy Bates and you know, Tony Collette and Dan Aykroyd and just this we kind of got I'm not sure how but every dreamy person that we said oh if we could get if we could get this person and then somehow it, it all kind of happened and it was just a dream it, was, yeah. it really was yeah I want to wish you lots of luck and of course I know with Variety choosing you you're going to go on to a great direct Tutorial career. I hope so. Thanks. How are you doing? Judd Hill. Oh my gosh, you are so nasty in Wolves of Wall Street. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah, you're bad. Bad man, yeah. I, I, it was interesting getting to play someone that bad. It's quite a change from the comedy that you've been doing. Yeah, you know, um, I've gotten to do some dramas and, you know, what I, what I really like is, you know, um, a couple of years ago I did a film called Moneyball and, and that was a drama and then this was a drama and but the characters are completely different from one another so for me it's exciting to get to just play very different people. You were just fascinated by your director and mm -hmm. his you were almost intimidated by him. Not almost I was incredibly intimidated by him you know uh, uh, Martin Scorsese is my favorite artist of all time any any form and uh, by far and away my favorite filmmaker ever and Goodfellas is the reason I want to make movies in the first place and so to get to even meet him was the coolest thing ever let alone get to collaborate with him for work for him for six months. Well, you said you were nervous at first but then you finally obviously relaxed. After a couple months it was a six month over a six month shoot so after the first maybe three months I think I finally calmed down a bit. So I, you were just great at it, and obviously that says a lot also for a good director as well as a good actor. Well, yeah, it, it was the best experience of my life. 
It's a great pleasure to have Jack Jones here. He is, as David O. Russell said last night, a local resident. I'm a local. You are in American Hustle, and there you were on the stage with everybody. That was the biggest hustle of them all, that I got in there. <laughs> well, you know, it's it's true that your part is not very large, but as David O. Russell said, he he, he established and wanted to establish uh, someone of your caliber, or Tony Bennett's, you know, either of you, doing this song that you do. Well, what he wanted, and, he, and I flew to Boston to do it, he wanted it, that, that moment, that feel-good moment, and that song, written by Cy Coleman, really set up the whole relationship of those two and so that I was it was a feel good moment so it worked uh, sure, Beneath the Harvest Sky is a coming of age story about two teenage boys in northern Maine who are trying to figure out what to do with their laws and they get caught up in the illegal prescription drug trade between Canada and the United States and I bet that happens a lot it does happen a lot, yeah. We, uh, we went up there and we really based the entire thing on, on actual events that happen up there. So I tried to make a very authentic movie of what it's like growing up in northern Maine. How about the fact that Variety did select you among the top ten, which you all have gone on to great careers? It's phenomenal to be able, and such an honor to be able to be selected within this group. Uh, we can't imagine what it's like to be able to now move forward on our next projects to have the support of Variety behind us. It, it means a tremendous amount to us. Yeah, I mean, to see the list of directors that have been selected before us, it's a pretty great group to now be a part of, so yeah. we're excited to see what it means for the future. Yeah. Okay, I, I want to say, you do, do offbeat films. I mean, you deal with things that are not pleasant. Yeah. What I, is it that turns you on about that? I don't know. It's somewhere, something there about having a very tricky main character, a tricky, tricky subject, is a thing for me. And it's always been like my third film was about two fundamentalist uh, girls who try to liberate themselves. And of course, Heart of a Lion about the neo-Nazi having a main character as a neo-Nazi and making him even a little bit sympathetic in some levels. Uh, I think it's something that arouses me and I don't know where it comes from. Maybe a, something tragic that happened to me in childhood, I don't know. You are dealing with neo-Nazism in this and they are, it's a pretty frightening group of people. So what prompted you to do that? Well, the thing is that I think prejudices work both ways. So the start of the film that we, the screenwriter Alex Abardi saw an neo-Nazi in a children's cinema and he had two blonde boys with him and then one Asian looking boy with him, like eight years, ten years old. And the guy was being very kind, you know, but he was wearing the tattoos, the attitude, the clothes. So we, we started talking about the prejudices work both ways. So we wanted to investigate that and kind of liberate every one of us uh, from prejudices. And I think that neo-Nazism at the moment and I suppose the right wing can arise because there's an economical issue or there's a recession and when there's a recession as you know humane history human history the right wing always rises and so we need to do this film to kind of stop that you are being honored by variety and does that what does that mean to you well uh, i was just telling people that i'm quite overwhelmed and uh you know you're as you're just a young boy every time it's kind of like getting an exception from uh, accepted by mom you get a hug from mom like your movie is good be happy about it enjoy it and i think it's important for the film also the message of the film that it spreads and um, it's, just, it's just it's just really nice i'm talking to mark halpern who's president of magic lamp films but mark brought the very first film that opened the very first film festival, Palm Springs International Film Festival, and then went in, on to win, I believe, the Oscar, right? Yes, won the Oscar. Yeah. Cinema Paradiso, which was fabulous. Yeah, that was back in uh, 1989, and I was at Miramax at the time, and uh, we got a call from the head film bar at, at uh, Metropolitan Theaters, which was the circuit here, and he told us about the festival, and he wanted something special, and they wanted Cinema Paradiso. We had an embarrassment of riches at the time because that was the year we had Sex, Lies, and Videotape and My Left Foot and Cinema Paradiso all opening before the end of the year. All right, now how does this festival compare to the others? Because each one has a different personality. With the Oscars and the Golden Globes all occurring at this time, it's a natural place for a festival to be. And it's the start of the season. It's the first festival of the new year, and it's a great way to bring everybody together and bring the press, journalists, 
and the stars together so that the public can find out about these new films. Everyone is talking about your film, oh, Belle. Oh, it was great. the opening night uh, for the film festival and everybody raved about it. I'm, I mean, it was an overwhelming response. Um, I hoped people would like it. I hoped they'd be touched and they'd be moved, but I didn't expect the kind of response that we did get. Um, and it's, it's just a privilege. It's a privilege to make a movie, show it to an audience and have them love it. It's based on a true story. It was um, a movie maker's gift when I saw a postcard print of a real portrait that exists of Dido Bell, who's the lead, lead woman in the film, and um, standing next to her sister, her sister cousin, if you like. And I saw this postcard and I was like, wow, this is incredible. She really existed. I can finally make my period drama and it's going to have a black girl lead. It's like, it was my dream. Well, you know, you were honored here as one of the 10 by Variety. So now here you are again. And that was, how meaningful was that being chosen originally by Variety? Um, it's an incredible privilege to have been chosen by Variety, um, to be included in that list of 10 with all of those fabulous directors that are there with me. I mean, you know, recognition for a director does so much. Um, it means that producers, studios take notice of who you are. It means that audiences hear more about the movie. So all around, um, it's a great thing that Variety does by, by supporting emerging filmmakers like this and kind of putting us on the map. Now you live in London. That's right. But you do fly to Holland a lot because your husband is with The Hague, right? That's right. So my husband works for the European Police in The Hague. Um, he is their chief spokesman, so we spend a lot of time in The Hague as well as in London. I married him because I thought I'd get lots of stories from him. I thought I was going to make the next homeland. Um, unfortunately, he tells me nothing. <laughs> Actually, you're the man in charge of all of this and acknowledging these wonderful young directors. Oh, thank you for saying that. I, uh, I'm sort of in charge of it in the sense that I, I kicked it off about 17 years ago, but as uh, you saw, Peter de Bruges and uh, my colleagues uh, helped me run this. So uh, it's Variety's love of uh, making sure people know who the new talents are and being right up to the minute and then actually being ahead of the minute so that we're telling people you should be paying attention. Well, you know, I was fascinated to, to see that Steve McQueen who's yeah. done such a great job with 12 Years a Slave, was one of the honorees some years ago. Yes, and uh, so was Ben Affleck and Chris Nolan, who did The Dark Knight, and um, uh, uh, Alfonso Cuaron, who probably uh, will see Gravity in the Oscars this year. Uh, so we have a, a 17 years of, uh, of being mostly right. Okay, now, you've, there's so many movies. How do you see them all? How do you make the decision? Well, the good thing is, the, the way we operate our Tend to Watch, it's based upon our critics seeing movies, and we review more films than anyone in the world. So this is all based upon our kind of intelligence gathering, so we then take the reviews that, that we've seen, and we start to curate. Because the truth is, we pick 10, but it's a curation. There's probably 50 that could be you know, easily interchangeable, but these are the 10 that sort of capture our imagination. And it, like one of the films, of course, uh, uh, Belle. And Ami was here last year? Was it last year that she was here before? I don't know if she was, but I wouldn't be surprised because the festival's very good about uh, discovering new talent. Yeah, well, everybody's talking about Belle. It's yeah. opening night. It just, yeah. everybody raved about the it. The nice thing there was the, uh, is an indication of how well we work together with the festival. We announced her as one of our 10 directors to watch. Her film wasn't locked in to the festival as opening night, and then it was. So, it, you know, we sort of collaborate. That's terrific. It really is. Okay, Variety, and you mentioned, what, 108 years? Years of the art. Eight years old, yeah, yeah. Oh gosh, but it's changed dramatically because it started in New York as a publication, really going back to vaudeville, yes. the theater, then movies, then it became very big in Hollywood as well as New York, and now it is digital. Period. Now that's a tremendous change. Well. Um the digital footprint, you know, having uh, Variety.com, which has had explosive growth this year. We had some folks uh, running things at Variety who weren't exactly as progressive as our new owners, uh, Jay Pinsky, who is a digital uh, publishing genius. And so our website, uh, the traffic on our site, I think we're up to over seven, eight million uniques a month. But our print product was also reinvented by Pinsky. And our print product every week is now the beautiful platform for the work I do, 
Uh, I couldn't be more thrilled to see when we do a section like 10 Directors to Watch or, or John Lee Hancock, Jonah Hill, to see it in this new print publication uh, that has the greatest designers and photographers. Um, it's been a good year. Okay, now, uh, I, I don't know. I, I know that obviously digitally you get it every day. Yep. Does the print publication, it used to come out every day, now? Yes. now. Well, the, the daily variety went away. But weekly, which is where Variety started in 1905, uh, that is still with us and in a new format that's uh, really very uh, user friendly. That's wonderful. I wrote for it once. <laughs> okay, well. I'm going to look it up in the archives and I'll send it to find you. Find it. I think 60 or 61 was when I did the one in Daily Variety. Okay, okay absolutely. All right, so now you'll. Uh, this to me is, is, is the heart of a film festival mm -hmm. because you are acknowledging new talent. Yeah. And. That's what it's all about. The big stars are great, and you get had big stars here today. But it's it's the heart, it's the creative you know, the process. Example of this process and how it works is 17 years ago, on the very first list I put together of directors to watch, we put a Mexican director on named Alfonso Coron. This year, Gravity, 650 million world gross. Sandra Bullock, I feel certain to be Oscar nominated. I think the picture as well, probably uh, Cuaron. But that started because he was an unknown filmmaker from Mexico, that, and we spotted him, and festivals spotted him. His career started in the festival world, as is the case with so many. So it really is, if you're interested in what's going to be important in five to ten years, you'll find it at a festival like Palm Springs. Well, I want to thank you so very much. Thank you. And I, I, I think, and I said this when I first um, came on the air with, with this show, that we're doing right now, that this is the heart of the festival. And I'm so glad that we're able to share it with our viewers. Thank you.